Today, I want to talk about the proof that FTX's AMC tokens were backed in a one-to-one -one ratio, as confirmed by Sam Bankman-Fried. I want to talk about how this was made possible via the use of synthetic shares and how this was used to manipulate the price of AMC for over a year. So stay tuned and let's make some money. Now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Hang Lu's tweeted saying SPF just answered yes to this question. Were FTX tokens backed in a one-to-one -one ratio? An interviewer yesterday asked Sam Bankman-Fried, were AMC and GameStop tokenized securities fully backed one-to-one? -one? Sam Bankman-Fried replied saying to the best of his knowledge, yes they were. And Hang Loose followed up by saying, so where are those 13F filings for those 400 million AMC shares? They should either be held by FTX directly, through CM Equity, or at interactive brokers. Effectively, they would have needed to file 13F filings to back up all of those tokens as listed on their platform. As that sad cat tweeted, he said FTX was supposed to hold 400 million shares of AMC for their derivative AMC token. He said you were supposed to be able to trade in that token for the underlying stock at any time. But he said, of course, the outstanding float for AMC is like 512 or 516 million shares. And it's well known that retail held 80 or 90% of the AMC float at all times over the last year and a half. How can retail be holding 80%, institutions also be holding 35 or 40% on top of that, and FTX holding an additional 400 million shares, which is like 70 or 80% of the float as well? Well, obviously, as that sad cat tweeted, he said they don't have the real shares, so they likely sold synthetic shares or naked shorts. FTX knew they legally could not file a 13F filing saying they hold 400 million shares because they know that it would be absolute rubbish. Retail are holding 80%, institutions are holding 35 so there's no way FTX could file saying that they were holding 400 million on top of that. And as he said, so at the very least, there's 400 million illegally sold synthetic shares that were sold to dilute the float and drive down the price of AMC. This has been fully admitted and confirmed as proof by Sam Bankman-Fried himself. Before we were only speculating with some form of indirect evidence that synthetic shares actually existed, but now it's been confirmed directly firsthand by Sam Bankman-Fried. I think now that Sam has absolutely confirmed that synthetic shares actually exist, it will be very interesting to see exactly what Adam Aaron does as a result over the next few weeks. I guess technically Adam Aaron can now legally speak about synthetic shares as they've been fully factually confirmed by Sam Bankman-Fried. Sam obviously confirmed he was selling synthetic Bitcoin and has also now confirmed that he was also selling synthetic AMC tokens as well that were fully backed but with synthetic shares. Now this story actually gets significantly more interesting as Sam was actually arrested in the early hours of this morning. But I'm going to talk about that in my video later today as that's a whole other can of worms. Interestingly, it seems that it's also not just FDX and Bittrex that were holding these tokenized securities. As Dave Murphy tweeted, he said Credit Suisse disclosed it was also holding tokenized securities for its clients in accordance with accounting guidance from the US SEC. This article says that Credit Suisse held $31 million in digital assets for clients last quarter. The Swiss bank disclosed its custody of what are more likely tokenized securities than cryptocurrencies in keeping with the SEC accounting guidance. Now that's obviously $31 million last quarter, but I wonder what Credit Suisse was holding at the peak and pinnacle of 2021 back in January and in June. We know that Credit Suisse are still holding these total return swaps on behalf of Archegos on AMC and GameStop, but it turns out they're now also holding tokenized securities of AMC and GameStop as well. It seems this tokenized security rabbit hole just continues to get deeper and deeper as these tokenized securities are basically synthetic shares. And it's not just FTX that was creating and holding these synthetics, Credit Suisse is also holding these synthetics as well. Credit Suisse and FTX basically seem to be the harbour for all of the crime impacting AMC and GameStop. They're holding the total return swaps and these tokenized securities. Also, just a quick one, if you didn't already know, Moon, we're currently holding their largest ever giveaway for the Christmas period. They're currently holding a $60,000 giveaway sweepstake. You also receive your 20 free shares when you sign up to Moomoo Moo right now using the link in the description below. And on top of that, as Crystal Ball tweeted, he said discussing the FTX scam, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, said that most crypto companies won't be around in the future, but the blockchain will. And the BlackRock CEO said today the next generation for markets and the next generation of securities is the tokenization of securities. So it seems even BlackRock wants to get into tokenizing securities like AMC and GameStop for their benefit. 
I imagine one of the sole reasons Sam was arrested in the early hours of this morning is because of that call last night, where he admitted that FTX tokenized securities were held on a one-to-one -one basis. Sam basically exposed the entire tokenization of securities as synthetic shares and has ruined it for the whole market like Credit Suisse and BlackRock as well. I imagine that's why he was arrested before he could talk further and talk further about the synthetic shares created on AMC and GameStop. And a suspended POS tweeted, he said, last I recall, I didn't give some crypto exchange like FTX permission as a shareholder of a publicly traded company on the stock exchange, any permission to create a tokenized security with a one-to-one -one backing of synthetic shares. He said, this has to be some kind of securities fraud, if you ask me. These market makers, exchanges and hedge funds have obviously been going around behind our backs without our permission, creating synthetic AMC shares. They've obviously also been doing this without the permission of Adam Aaron, and that's why Adam Aaron hasn't been able to do anything about it so far, because he hasn't had 100% proof, as they didn't tell him what they were doing. How can Adam Aaron do anything about synthetic shares that don't exist if they haven't given him proof that they actually exist? However, now it seems Sam Bankman-Fried has given him and us all of the proof that synthetic shares do absolutely exist by saying that his tokenized securities were one-to-one -one backed, obviously not with real shares, but with synthetic shares instead. It really seems like this fraud is never ending, but it also seems like many of these hedge funds and major banks are still loading up on AMC shares, preparing for the squeeze. As Crystal Ball tweeted, he said, Bank of New York Mellon Corporation is an interesting one. He said if they lent out all of their AMC stock, they could earn around $6,000 per day. Now that $6,000 per day is calculated with a 23% borrowing cost. We know that AMC had a borrowing cost of 1% for a long time, but it did spike to over 200%. Even if you calculate this based on 200%, that's only $60,000 per day. Therefore, Bank of New York Mellon is obviously not holding their AMC shares to lend out the stock for only $60,000 a day at an absolute maximum. They're obviously holding their AMC shares, preparing for the mother of all short squeezes. Bank of New York Mellon holds around 1.7 million shares of AMC and purchased these shares with an average cost of around $41 per share. That's a total cost of around $68 million. So far, they're down nearly 90% on their investment, meaning they've lost around $60 million. Earning $60,000 per day does not replace the loss of $60 million. Therefore, they're obviously holding these shares for an ulterior motive, not for share lending, obviously for the mother of all short squeezes. And he said that's obviously not a huge amount for one of the biggest banks in the world. He said the main reason they hold is obviously for the future mother of all short squeezes potential. We know this is also the case for many other of these major hedge funds and major banks and major institutions that have been buying up tons and tons of AMC shares in the 30, 40 and 50 dollar regions and they are still holding them and still adding to their positions every single day. Even though the fraud seems to be never ending, it's finally been exposed by Sam Bankman-Fried and that's why all of these hedge funds continue to hold their shares. I also found some very interesting information about the Volkswagen squeeze and about the Volkswagen stock immediately before the squeeze. So this extract talks about how Volkswagen had around 295 million shares issued at the time of the squeeze, around half the size of the AMC flow. Now the really interesting part is that Volkswagen had a short interest of around 12.9 to 15% at the time of the squeeze, but there was a very low trading volume, it was a very illiquid stock of only around 600,000 shares traded on a daily basis. That meant the DTC or the days to cover on the Volkswagen stock at the time of the squeeze was around 65 to 75 days. Basically, it's really interesting because the Volkswagen stock was incredibly illiquid at the time of the squeeze, just like the AMC stock has become over the last year and a half. AMC is continuing to become more and more and more illiquid, basically bringing us closer and closer to the squeeze. Right now, the number of days to cover for AMC is only around six days. That means the AMC stock has to continue getting more and more illiquid for the squeeze to happen. I think when we get closer and closer to the 65 to 75 day time period, that will be when AMC ends up squeezing. This extract says in the same way that it had taken several months for the large short position to have built up, it could be expected to take similarly a few months for this situation to unwind in a gentle way. It said this is an uncomfortably long time, even a week might feel a long time for short sellers to unwind their positions. 
And if the situation were to unwind rapidly, the price could be expected to rise and squeeze rather than fall. Because it would have taken the short so long to unwind in a normal and gentle way, that's why the stock ended up squeezing because it was so, so panicked. This is why we need to continue waiting to see AMC become more and more illiquid. As the hedge fund and HFT volume decreases, the stock becomes more illiquid and shorts become more panicked. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.